Okay, so we've, we've adjusted the settings um, for the camera so they correspond with the actual camera we use. I might just go in now and change it to Sony DSCP200. And when we do that, everything else will update too. So what we need to do now is just change how this is being displayed on here. Um, so I'm just going to go view select camera, make sure it's selected. It is because it's attributes are showing here. And um, we're going to click through a few of these things here. And that's to show the grid. That shows the film git. So we can actually see the dimensions of the camera. There are other things you could look at too. You can show the resolution git. And currently it's 640 by 480. Now that's how it's going to, uh, that's how it's displayed there. But if you want to make sure that's true to the dimensions of the image, um, we can go up to the render settings up here. And at the moment, we aren't doing anything um, too spectacular, so we're just going to use the Maya software renderer. But it's more about the resolution of what we're going to render out. Um, we can change this format later on. I mean, the Maya format's fine just for some tests and stuff, but we might want to change it to a TIFF or something like that. Moving down, go down to the resolution here. And um, we can change that to the presets, or we could change it to custom. We could change it to... The resolution that we wanted which was I believe 1280 by 960 and if you double if you're unsure about why we're setting that resolution we can go back to the original image here which if you right click look at its properties it will tell you it's 1280 by 960 used again so we need DSCP 200 etc so we'll close that down for now and if we hit close we can see actual size of the camera we used it's now the sony dse p200 and we can begin to load up the image in the background so there's a number of ways you could do this um, you could do it by doing view image plane import image or you could click on the little icon there which will add the image plane to. So I'm just going to do image plane import image and I'm going to look for the image alley clean and click open. And that has been placed in the background of that image, in the background of that camera. Now we can tweak some of the settings here. But at the moment, we're just viewing the image plane. And sometimes it can be um, useful um, if you view it whilst you have your camera selected. Okay? But at the moment, and the attributes of the camera, the, the image plane that's attached isn't showing. And you, that's just because it's you've not told it to show it. It is there. If you go to Show, and there's lots of different filters you can set to show on your attributes editor. But if you go along to By Node Type, we can go down and we can see Camera image plane and also we can show its transformations like that so I'll just move that across a bit you can see it a bit better so you have the camera the image plane and the image plane again attached to it so now it's all under the node of the camera so whenever you get the camera selected you're going to see your image plane too so moving down you can see that the image fills the frame exactly as we want to just a couple of settings you might want to um, check um, this image plane is attached to the camera so it's like it's been put in front of the camera and fixed so every time you move the camera the image plane will move so it will always be constant in the background just to ch check that you know if you move in and out of the camera it looks like what you're actually doing is moving the grid um, but you're not you're actually moving the camera in relation to the grid and I'm just going to navigate around and get the grid lined up. Anyway, also what you might need to do is you can have it attached to the camera here or fixed in space, but we want to attach the camera. You can see this plane in all views or just when you're looking through this camera. So that means if you were to go through to another perspective view, you would be able to see that image plane. And we'll just do that for a second. I'll go to the um, panels layouts and I'll do two pin side by side and I'll change this one from an outliner to just the perspective camera 
and if we pull out we can see there's our camera if you move around you can see the plane is fixed to it if we go back to this one and we were to move around we can see that the image is then fixed again because it's attached to the camera and when you let go you can see the camera and that and its relationship being fixed is constant and every time you update the camera's position it's there Let's go back to this one if you don't want that to happen um, you can just see it looking through the camera and you'll only see it in the background of that camera that's really a preference thing it can start to bug you if you see that in all views um, again it's totally up to you now what you can do is um, when you actually start to model in the environment around here you need to see it a bit clearly more clearly than, than you can right now it's difficult to view the grid you could change the preferences and change your grid color and things like that um, another thing you could do is just turn down the alpha again so you can see it as a ghosted image all fully there and you can do that it's just a display option um, again if this is video footage when we come to do um, tracking and want to make um, 3d environments that fit a video sequence we just click on image sequence but we're just working with a still placement um, you can see a best and fit to film gate or resolution gate and then we'll fill it up but we've got everything corresponding as we want so we don't need to worry about that and the other feature that you might be interested in here is when you go into placement you've got this feature called depth and that's the distance away from the camera that this is and it's not immediately apparent right now how this is going to affect you but once you start modeling your scene if you model this path um, at some point it's going to cut through there you can just increase the depth and it will go further away etc and I'm going to, if I made it sort of 500 go quite a bit away and what we're noticing here is oops, what we're noticing here is it's getting bigger the further away it gets and purely and simply that's just because um, of the angle of the camera it always will fill the frame so the extents of the camera's angle of view are the same so the closer it gets it will fill that angle further away it will fill that angle and it will appear bigger um, but anyway those are the main settings for that so that has set up your image in the viewer and now all you need to do is to start matching up the scene so I'm going to take a little break from there but now you have your background image in place you have your camera set up we've renamed it the DSE P200 and we have all the attributes set as we want and we can start to begin aligning the camera with our scene and modeling the environment I'm going to take a break here and we'll come back and just show you how to put in a bit of geometry to set the first few things in this scene